It was the British slave trade that created the first English pigeon. The ships that left Britain for West Africa spread English pigeons and creoles to the slave plantations of the New World, returning home laden with rum and molasses, creating the wealth of ports like Bristol. Bristol's splendid Regency crescents are a gleaming reminder of the city's prosperous slaving past. And just outside the city is the grave of a young African who would probably have known Pigeon. Pigeon is one of those loaded words like dialect and creole we've inherited to describe non-standard forms of English. Of course, when you come to think of it, English is a kind of creole a hybrid of Latin, Anglo-Saxon, Danish, and Norman French. The slave trade created several varieties of what we now call Black English, a scattered family that includes an emerging British Black English, Caribbean Creole, Southern Black English, and African English. Up and down the rivers of West Africa, Pidgin English has been a language of trade ever since the first contact with British ships. In Africa today, they still use Pidgin for everyday communication. An expert in African Pidgins is Professor J.L. Dillard. Many people think of pigeon especially as being um, um, an unfavorable term, and they think maybe in terms of meet Tarzan you Jane. Every pigeon speaker has another language. In many cases, people who speak pigeon languages speak several other languages very well and very fluently. A West African who speaks uh, pigeon English to another West African is not acknowledging the superiority of an Englishman or anything like that. Uh, it's his to do with the way he wants, and as long as he can uh, make sense with it, he feels perfectly happy. The name for the pigeon around the world is talky talky, uh, talk talk. It ain't no language, we just talk it. Freetown, Sierra Leone. Here, the national language, Creole, is an English Creole spoken by everyone, including the president. use of English, both at home here and internationally, it will be very good for Sierra Leone, and that's why we are practicing it. And the use of Creole locally, just as good. Creole is the language of the street. Like many of his people, President Siaka Stevens switches easily from standard English to Creole, depending on the situation. Hey, stop, stop, stop. Stevens recently resigned, but as president, he liked to buy fresh fish from the seashore on his way home from work. And Creole is always the language of negotiation. What did I want, sir? Uh, take three mackerel. I want to. I come there twice, thrice a week, and uh, I enjoy the bit of haggling and uh, exchange. Well, I'll be happy. Five, five years, you pay, sir. Fifty last if you take the fifty last. How much you pay, sir? Thank you, thank you. All this matter. No, I don't want that. Where are you? Yes, sir. Where are you? I buy fish there now and again because it's quite fresh. That's the beauty. And take it home. Well, they try to charge me a little extra because they say I'm president. Creole is part of a family of African Creoles. Brought here by trade, Creole is being spread by trade. Olive Coker teaches English, but uses Creole in the marketplace. It includes universal pidgin words like savvy and piccaninny. Most of the communication in the market is in Creole. You can get things cheaper just by being nice to them, talking and begging most of the time. 
How much do you pay? Pepper? Pepper? 20, 20 cents. See, so I think I will see what I'm doing. Why do you make pepper here? I will buy and here. 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 Part of Shakespeare and the Bible have been translated into Creole. Its unique spelling conventions have recently been codified in a Creole English dictionary. The Dr. Johnson of Creole is Professor Eldred Jones. The word for house is os. Shoe is sus. Trousers would be tosis. I would be yai. Ear, that would be yes. Nose would be nos. Mouth will be mot, stomach will be belly. There are a number of English-related pigeons and creolized languages all the way down the west coast of Africa, in the Caribbean, in parts of North America, which are, with a certain amount of adjustment, mutually intelligible because they were developed by speakers who originally spoke African languages and who then came in contact with English. And so they, made, they tended to make the same kinds of adjustment to their speech. This is the first time I read the news. President Shaka Stevens left State House in the tongue today to go work in Monrovia, when the capital for Liberia. Before he left, the president, where he did talk to pressman them, talk say he hopes say this patrol where they go go help for make the trading business and the friendship where they between Salon and Liberia go before. From now till this same time tomorrow, the place go warm little bit.